Praise the Lord, everyone. Make sure you get in here and you share with everyone and let them know that Second Baptist is on. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Make sure you share with somebody and let them know that we are live. about three minutes we'll get started in our word of the day about two more minutes make sure you share this with someone make sure you share this with somebody
morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Here we go. Here we go. Let us get into God's word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all you've done. We thank you for every way you've made. We thank you for every door you've opened. God, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We do not take for granted that we are here today. God, we love you. We adore you. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your word. We thank you for the opportunity to start our day off in prayer. We thank you for the opportunity to give your name praise, honor, and glory. God, you've done so much for us that we must say thank you. God, just because of who you are, we must say thank you. We must worship you. God, you are the great one. You are the great I am. So God, allow this word to be clear and concise as we just want to be closer to you during this 10 days of fasting. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. It is my prayer that everyone is doing well this morning. It is my prayer that everyone's doing well this morning. Uh, I'll let you know that today we did have some uh, YouTube issues, but uh, if you check YouTube at a later point today, you will find the morning devotional that I'll do now. You will find that posted. Uh, our word today is where we've been for the last few days. This is day four of our fast. I pray that you're holding on. I pray that you're doing well. Uh, I don't know about you, but I told the church yesterday that every now and then I get hungry still. And uh, I have to figure out uh, a way to, to make sure that I don't keep my mind on those things that I cannot have. But I can rejoice about those things that I can have, those things that are from the earth, that water that I can drink. Um, remember, I told you that the, uh, give me just one second. I want to make sure the sound is not messing up on my end. Sometimes the internet connection is messed up, but I'm sitting right next to my router. So prayerfully, I will be okay. But it is, um, it is definitely difficult in these, sometimes in, in a fast uh, the one of the most difficult things is that uh, when you're fasting, but the children aren't fasting, you have to prepare food for them, uh, but it's food you can't eat. So we just want to pray for those who are preparing food that they cannot eat uh, during this season. Let's jump into God's word. We've been in Daniel uh, yesterday. Oh, we had such a powerful worship experience uh, from praise and worship to our praise dance. We want to... Uh, uh, shout out Sister Naomi, as well as Sister Kristen, as they uh, led the charge with the praise dance and the return of the praise dance ministry. What a powerful uh, dance ministry it was yesterday. And then when we got into the word, we finished up on Daniel chapter 3, or we got close to finishing Daniel chapter 3. And this morning, we're going to just finish three verses, uh, and then I'm going to give you some homework for today. Uh, so three verses, and I'll give you some homework for today. Uh, the three verses will be Daniel chapter 3, verses 27 through 30. Daniel chapter 3, verses 27 through 30. Verse 27 begins this way. And the princes, the governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair on their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then, then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Church, uh, we dealt with yesterday how your obedience will put you into some hot situations. Your obedience 
will allow you to go through some things that you never would have imagined. Your obedience. This is because Daniel, had Daniel been disobedient, no telling what he would have had to go through if he was disobedient. But his obedience led him into some troubling times. His obedience led him into some crazy situations. And in this case, landed him in a fiery pit or a furnace. And now he's in a position where the king says, you've got to worship somebody. And I want you to worship this golden statue. But I told you yesterday that Daniel said, no, I said what I said. I'm not going to worship this golden statue. This golden statue hasn't made a way for me. This golden statue hasn't opened a door for me. This golden statue is not God. So I can't worship your false gods because I know too much about God to worship anybody else. And y'all, that's what I've learned in my life is that y'all, I don't know if that is that your testimony that you know too much about him that you, can, you can't even afford to worship someone else. You know the ways he's made for you. You know the doors he's opened for you. You know the doors he closed for you. And therefore, you cannot, uh, you cannot worship something else because you've got a God to worship. Y'all, verse 27, I like verse 27 because it lists how big this was, that all the government officials, the princes, the governors, and the captains, this is the king's counselors, uh, what's interesting to me is that the king had counsel, but the king did not have wise counsel. And y'all, some of us got counsel, but it's not the right counsel. It's not wise counsel. It's not the counsel that's going to carry us to our next phase. It's not the counsel that is going to get us to where God wants us to be. Y'all, he says the king's counsel, but it does not mean because it's the king's counsel that it was wise. And y'all, we've got to be careful to surround ourselves with wise counsel because it's with wise counsel that we will a be able to do the work of God. But y'all, if we let everybody give us advice, because if they were such counsel, how come they didn't tell the king this was a bad idea? If they were such good counsel, they should have said, king, this, this is a bad idea. But because he was the ruler of the day, they bowed down to him. You can't have counsel around you that are a group of yes men or yes women. You have to have counsel around you that will let you know, hey, that's not the best idea. Let's not do this right now. Let's not do, this is not the right thing. This is not of God. This goes against the word. You have to have counsel around you so that you won't end up like Nebuchadnezzar worshiping a false God. Here he says that they were gathered together. They saw these men whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair on their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Y'all, this part of the scripture says a ton. Look at, let, let's break it down just phrase by phrase. They saw these men. The enemy's people are watching you. They are watching how the people of God will respond. But not only are they watching how you respond, they're watching how you will come out of the test you're in. They're watching how you will come out of the situation you're in. They're watching how you will handle your fiery pit. How will you handle your fiery pit, church? How will you handle the situation? How will you handle the hot place that you're in? How will you handle the hot seat? How will you handle the situation? Because the people are watching. It says that they saw these men, so their eyes were glued on this man or these men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel. But this is what I love. It says, upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Y'all, this fire didn't, didn't burn their skin. It didn't leave any, uh, it, didn't, it didn't cause them to overheat. This fire, it says, had no power. It didn't have a little bit of power. It didn't have, you know, some kind of power. But it says this this fire had no power. Y'all, I don't know about you, but many of us couldn't stand in a fire and it have no power. That you have no sign. Not only do you not look like what you've been through, but there's no signs that it was ever there. Y'all, I've been uh, in ministry for just a little second and... I've been to hospitals and I, I, I've prayed with people that I know have stage four cancer. They have, uh, you know, terminal diseases and God heals them. And when God heals them, the doctor comes back 
and some people you can see and they'll say man you're going to have less you're going to have lasting effects and you're going to have lasting issues but every now and then you'll see that God will heal someone and the doctors will even have to say there's no signs of the sickness there's no signs of the disease and y'all, I've been praying with those who I know have been affected with COVID, those I know who have been affected with uh, different diseases and uh, cancers in their body. And y'all, whenever I pray, I pray not only that God heals, but I pray that there is no signs of the disease, that it, there was no trace that is ever there. And what happened is Daniel comes out of this fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego come out of this fire. And because God stepped in the fire, because God stepped in, there's no signs that they were ever there. When God steps in this fire and he begins to work with them, there is no signs that they were ever there. It says that, that they came out and their bodies had the effects that the fire had no power. But then it says, nor was a hair on their head even singed. And then it says, neither were their coats changed. That not only... Was I not changed by the fire? I'm speaking for Daniel now. Not only was my physical body not changed, but even those things that were on me weren't changed. That y'all know if we put our clothes in the fire right now, they would burn up. If we put our clothes in a fire right now, they, they would be gone. We wouldn't have the clothes. But y'all, this is what happens. That which is attached to the man of God or that which is attached to that which is favored by God, even the attachment survived. And y'all, Daniel survived the fire. Hair was not even singed. Clothes was not even burned, which lets me know even that which is attached to you will not have the effects of what you've gone through. And some of us have gone through so much in our life. We have been in such hot situations that y'all, People are looking at us wondering how in the world we made it out. And this is how the king's princes and governors and uh, his counselors, they, they are looking and they're wondering. It does not make sense. Remember, he had astrologers or scientists surrounding him and the scientists were looking and they said it does not make sense how they came out of this. And y'all, the enemy's looking at your life. People are looking at your life and you're going through the worst test. Everyone knows what you're going through and they're trying to figure out how you just can keep a smile on your face. How in the world can you keep smiling and you're suffering in your life? How can you keep smiling and your job is failing? How can you keep smiling and things are not working out? But y'all, don't you know that in the midst of things not working out, that's where God steps in and, real, and you have to realize that when people are looking at you wondering how you came out, you ought not be worried about how you came out, but you ought to be glad that you know the one who pulled you out. And y'all, sometimes I don't know how I made it. Sometimes I don't know how he spared my life. I don't know why he kept me. But y'all, I'm just glad to know who kept me because I have enough of a relationship with him that even though I don't always do right, even though I don't always make the right stand, even though I I'm sinful in my nature that God's spirit within me pulls me out of some situations that even I get myself in y'all that's a place to rejoice that y'all God spares us in spite of us he saves us in spite of us he keeps us in spite of us it's not because you're good it's not because you've been faithful it's not because you look good it's not because you got the right clothes on it's because God decided to love you enough to spare you in spite of you and some of us ought to be glad that the old song would say that he looked beyond my faults and he saw my needs he looked beyond my sin and saved me he looked behind my problems and gave me purpose he looked beyond my pain and gave me a promise God looks beyond those places and those things that we want or want to be and places 
places us where we need to be, when we need to be there. The fire was necessary because if they never seen a fire, they may have never seen the power of God step in. And y'all, some of us are wondering why we go through what we go through. But I come this morning to remind you the reason that you're going through your test is so that you can see God step in on the in the nick of time. And somebody right now is saying, God, you should have stepped in yesterday. But God said, there's something I needed you to learn in the test so that I could step in for your testimony. You don't have a testimony unless God steps in and pulls you out. Sometimes some of us think we're going to get a testimony because time is going to pass over. But I'm telling you, time doesn't change a thing. It's the fact that God steps into your test and it's him who adds the testimony to a test. It's him who adds the triumph to a trial. It's him who gives promises to the ones who have problems. It's him who pulls you from where you are. And even when he doesn't pull you from where you are, he has the ability to step in and give you grace to survive. And y'all, that's some of us this morning, that we're just happy God is giving us grace to survive. That y'all, when I come out of this, my enemy is looking, how in the world did Chauncey make it out of this? How in the world did he make it? I threw all kind of dirt on his name. How did he survive? I talked about him. How did he survive? He did this. He did that. How is he surviving? It's not because I'm smart. It's not because of my degrees. It's not because I dress all right. It's not because of me, but it's the grace of God on my life. Y'all, you ought not look at how, how God how you how you made it out because I don't make it out. God pulls me out. I can't. It's in him I live, move, and have my being. And if God is the one who orders my steps, if God is the one that steps in, it's not because of me. I'm filthy. I'm sick. I have issues. I'm sinful. I'm just a man. But I thank God that even in my downfalls, even in my sin, even in my troubles, I have a God that gives me unmerited grace. I don't earn this grace. I don't deserve this grace. But because I'm in relationship with him, he gives me grace. He gives me peace that surpasses all understanding. He gives me favor. He gives me love. He gives me kindness. He gives me mercy. Lord, I'm so glad that he has mercy on me because the Bible tells me that the wages of sin are death. And if the wages of sin are death, that means that I deserve to be dead. But even in spite of me, he still saves me, y'all. I'm so glad that we have a savior that saves us when we don't deserve it. Y'all, I know it's not Sunday morning, so don't act so saved on me because some of you are just like me, that you don't deserve it. No, I'll take that back. All of you are just like me. Maybe we've got different sins. Maybe we got different issues, but y'all, we're all one in the same because the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But isn't it good to know that though we fall short, the Bible tells us, thank you, Sister Harris, that now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless. Y'all, I didn't got happy this morning because with all my faults, he can present me faultless and he can bring me out of a fire and I'm not burned. He can bring me out and my clothes aren't singed. He can be, bring me out and it's going to leave the enemy looking how in the world did I make it over? And y'all, I smile in the face of the enemy because they thought that their darts were going to take me out. They thought that what they had on me was going to take me out. They thought that what they were going to say about me were going to take me out. But y'all, I've come through the fire and I don't smell like smoke. I've come through the rain and my clothes ain't even wet. I've come through the test and I still came out singing because this joy that I have. The world did not give and the world did not, cannot take away. This joy I have is on the inside of me. So what's on the outside of me has to respond to my faith on the inside. And I know I'm surrounded by a fire. I know I'm surrounded by enemies, but thank God that he will deliver. The Bible closes this way, y'all. I got to stop. I got to quit this morning. Y'all got me pushing myself. Here we go. It says, 
that Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they may not serve nor worship any God except their own. That y'all, when God pulls you out, even the enemy is going to have to acknowledge him. Even the enemy is going to have to acknowledge that he is Lord, that, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. My brothers and sisters, the enemy has changed his tune because he's seen what God can do. And sometimes we have to realize the reason it's important for how we respond to a test is because when the enemy sees our response, they begin to worship our father. And this is what Nebuchadnezzar says. Nebuchadnezzar says that this is so good. This is so miraculous that I'm going to change my mind. And these brothers here, they don't have to worship this false God, but they can worship the God of themselves without losing their lives. They don't have to worship my God with a little G but they can worship my God with the big G. And y'all, he says it this way. He says, therefore, I make a decree that even peop every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces. Their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. In other words, the king thought his hands were so big he thought that he had such a grip that he thought he had so much power that he said, after what I've seen today, I am a living witness that no other God can do what I've seen today. And y'all, I'm telling you that I've lived long enough to see God do a lot of things. But one thing I've never seen is God fail. And if God never fails, that even the enemy is going to have to acknowledge that there is no other God that can deliver like this. Isn't it comfortable? Isn't it good? Isn't it godly to know that you have the only God that can deliver? The sun God can't deliver you. The sun God can't save you. The moon God can't save The God of this and the God of that. Your horoscope can't save you. That, that, that's a God for some of us. Some of us make the horoscopes our God. And my brothers and sisters, it's good to know that even a wicked king realizes that no other God could do this. Who wouldn't serve a God like our God? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the ability to worship you. We thank you for the ability to call upon your name. We thank you for the ability to love you. We thank you for the ability to say thank you, Jesus, that you've saved us, you loved us. As we go upon our work day, as we go upon our, our busy days, God, as we go upon even our days of relaxation, that God, you will be with us. Bring us closer in your word. Bring us closer to you. God, we pray for those who are sick and shut in. We pray for those who are grieving family members this even today, God, we, we pray for those who have lost a family member, God, that you will continue to comfort them, that you will continue to be the spirit, the Holy Spirit that will comfort, that will keep, that will carry them through this season. God, we love you. We adore you. We give your name praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Strengthen us today. Give us power today. Give us strength to fight during this fast. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 It is my prayer that you are blessed. It is my prayer that when you go forth in this day, that you will have the strength to fight. That when the assassin comes to tear your life apart, God will breathe. He will raise up a standard and he will defend you. He will deliver you from the hand of the enemy so that you could continue to walk in your God given purpose. Your homework today, your homework today is for you to read Daniel chapter 4. Please find time today to read Daniel chapter 4 because we are going to keep in Daniel during this fast and I just want us to be on the same page as we may jump a couple chapters, but I want you to read Daniel chapter 4 
so that we can make sure we're on the same page together. Uh, it is our prayer that you are blessed. If you were blessed by today's word, I'm not asking you to sow into me. Sow into the fertile ground that is myself and Second Baptist. So that is, you can do that via Zelle at churchsecondbaptist at gmail.com. If you are in the area, you can drop off and offering a seed to the church during the hours of 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. or you can even drop it into our mailbox slot uh, on the front door and you can uh, do that at 436 South 13th Avenue Maywood Illinois 60153 as well as again you can give electronically at Zale at 2nd no, church second baptist at gmail.com. Church second baptist at gmail.com. Be blessed. Remember that you carry a legacy to leave a legacy to be carried. In the words of my late great pastor, the Reverend Michael K. Jones, the worst is over and the best is yet to come. Why? Because you serve the only God that can deliver. Have a blessed day.